right there. Yes. You know, you realize our, when you lose two pianists in a few months, it's nice to have somebody tip a little guy a little bit. Amen. Oh, yeah. I love our guitar player, Brother Gary. I thought you were talking about yourself there. <laughs> I do love myself. That's the problem. That's the problem. Uh, no man yet hated the tone problem. Yes. But he cherished it. Mm. That's what the Bible says. So I'm going to read that Bible now. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, we're going to try it this third time. This third time, all right? Third time. I want some hallelujahs. You got that? It's all right. If you want me to sing, we all want to say it. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're looking at the book. You can't be looking at me, but that's okay. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me. Well, I live for him and do his blessed will. Oh, full of fire and bounty, I'm nothing now to fear. With his hand, I eat my hungry soul to fill. And sweep it up to glory to see his blessed face.
Brother Wagner. I'd have put a bird tie over there. That's just, yeah, you know, that, now y'all don't, y'all don't, don't know anything about using bird tie means I can pause it as long as I want to pause it. If you want to put a bird's eye there, brother, you're welcome. So we're putting a bird's eye there. Amen. <laughs> we're, y'all don't have to write it. Just, just remember, all right? All right. We're going to try that verse number two. times 
None of God's creatures can transcend natural law. That includes angels. They cannot transcend natural law. But God can transcend natural law. God says, go to your prayer closet and shut the door. Now you say, yeah. That key, and make sure you run Satan out before you shut the door. Because he can't get in through the wall. But guess who can come in through the wall? They're in the upper room. Yeah. Now, I'm just telling you, they're in the upper room. And God showed up in the midst of them. The door was shut. They were locked in. And God showed up in the midst of them. How's he do it? He can transcend nature. He's over nature. He makes the rules and he can break the rules. Right. But you can't. The wages of sin is death. Death to your family, death to your friendships, death to your health, death to your finances. It always costs. Something dies every time we sin. We always look at that as eternal. Where is that verse at? The ways of sin is dead. Romans. Where? Six. Oh, wait a minute. Romans 6. Wait a minute. Romans 6. Romans 1 to the end of Romans 4. Is about justification. Romans 5, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're starting into sanctification. And that is where God says the wages of sin is death. Now it's true about justification, the wages of sin is death. But it's also true about your Christian life. Sin brings death. Not eternal death. No, that was taken care of by justification. But it does bring death. I don't have time to. Oh my. I, just, I was getting, getting happy just thinking about no one cared for me like Jesus. Do y'all know 195? Down at the cross where the Savior died. Down where it pretends it from sin. I cried. There in my heart was the blood applied. And we sang glory to his name. 195. And then we're going to let the, the, the hate man sing a song or something. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where we're cleansing from sin I cried. There in my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name.
about that. That's reality. Yes, sir. A fountain. There is a fountain filled with Yes, me. there is. Drawn from the man who is my head. And sinners plunge beneath the flood. It's flooding out. Flowing. Flooding out. Lose all their guilty stuff. Why? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the puddle of Jesus' blood. <laughs> no, sir. No, that leaves it there. It's flowing. It's eternal blood. For eternal salvation. By the eternal spirit. For the everlasting covenant. When God made a covenant. In the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's an everlasting. It's forever. And it just continues. And continues. And it's continuously. Not just continually. Now that continuously. Is a new word. Your old English Bible. The real Bible. The only Bible in the English language. Alright. That Bible used the word continually. But later on down history's way. We came up with continuously. Continually, which is now means over and over and over again. Continuously means con this keeps on going. And let me say, it goes over and over and over again, but it keeps on going. I can't explain all that. Y'all, y'all get. I leave that to y'all, big time Bible college students and right. graduates. Maybe y'all, you got your master's degree? Not yet. No. Now you're still working on it. No, probably not. Don't worry about it. You'll never be a master of the scripture. That's true. I mean, so I, I went to go, I was, went, I was broke my doctoral thesis. They told me I had to get a bachelor's degree first. <laughs> I said, I don't want a bachelor's degree. My wife won't let me become a bachelor. She said, you got married, you can't be a bachelor. And so I said, I just want to stay associated. And then, uh, hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> oh. Uh, All right, brother, you're supposed to be saying a special. All right. And then you're going to pray. Come on, get us. Come on, bring the baby up here, too. Come on. I mean, microphone. Uh, three. All right. Three. There's one there. All right. It's on. All right. We'll make sure that one's on. That one's on. There's that one. Glory. Okay. Here's this one. This is two. Oh, come here. We've got this one. Or I just need to drop it down some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can drop that down. That way we have to hold it. We can do this. Whatever you need me to do. Brother, we are very yeah, brother. I know somebody's Solomon. Watching. Somebody's probably Solomon. watching this live stream and saying, Oh, they're so busy. No, you don't need those, brother. Come on. We're wrong family right. here. Come on. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to do this thing. Come on, Louis Reese. Yeah, oh, we got another one. We got, got microphones. All right, is that good for y'all? It's a song, right? It's a song. All of them are on. All right, y'all right. tell y'all.
to. Amen. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad the uh, Hay family is here. Hey, me and y'all got enough to do. Okay. Yeah, you want to do one more? You want to do one more? You don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. You want to do one considering or concerning I should say the love of God and what a what an amazing and transformational truth the love hey. of God is yeah let me tell you there, there, there's nothing that'll that'll revolutionize and change your life like get a hold and appropriating the love of God in your life and I'm sad to say I'm, I'm, I'm a little ashamed to say it took me a while to really get a hold of it and I 
mean, I think the love of God is one of those things that you just keep learning about to the day. Sure. That you got, you know? right. There's always new mercies and there's always new aspects and new facets of it that you've never really considered or understood before. But oh, let me tell you, some things here in 1 John chapter 4, the Lord has really been using in my life to, to set me free in some areas where I let, really, I guess the devil... Um, yeah, but. My own ideas, whatever it might be, put me back into some bondage that I had no business being in. Because those that are in Christ were not under bondage. Right. We're, we're free. There's freedom in the love of God. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just preach, for you, preach to you for a couple minutes this morning on this topic. Jesus loves me, and I believe it. Hey. Jesus loves me, and I believe it. This is a wonderful chapter of the Word of God. I, I've gone through in my Bible, and I've circled all the times that the word love and loveth is used. And it's all throughout this, this, this portion of Scripture. Right? It's a yes, sir. Thing. And uh, uh, we could just read the whole chapter, what a wonderful chapter it is. But let's, let's jump in in verse number 8. All right, 1 John 4, verse number 8. The Bible says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Let's pause. We'll ask the Lord to help us, and then we'll dive into, into these, these and some following verses as well. Lord, we thank you so much this morning for your word. What a privilege it is to be able to open it. What a privilege it is to be able to open it in, in a free country, Lord, without fear of this meeting being broken up and our Bibles confiscated. What a blessing that is. And Lord, what a privilege it is to be able to preach the Word of God this morning. Would you hide me behind the cross, Lord? I sure don't want anything to come out of my mouth that would, that would be a wrong against the Lord. It would be not what you have for us this morning. And I would pray that you would take your Word and you would take your love and you would fill our hearts with it this morning. We'll give you all the praise and the glory and the honor because only you are worthy of any of it. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In these few verses that we've just read, I notice the personification of the love of God. Yes. You see, that it's one thing to say that I love you, and I believe in saying I love you. I think that's something that we ought to do. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we ought to, we ought to let, let our, our, hey. our, other fellows, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ know that we love them and that we care about them. That's right. I think it's important in a family context, in a family setting, to, to let your spouse know, hey, I love you. Hey. Let your family, your, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, let them know, hey, I love you. I care about you. But love that is just expressed in word doesn't amount to a word. Love that is just spoken without any, any actions or any, anything backing that up isn't worth a whole lot. Right. Because if you, you tell somebody that you love them and then you treat them like dirt, they're not going to believe that you love them. Right. Because your actions speak counter to what your words are speaking. Come on, come on. Your talk talks and your walk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Right. That's right. That's right, brother. But in this passage of Scripture, not only does, does God state for us His love, but He demonstrates, He shows us right. His yes, love yes, in His only begotten Son who He given for us. See, God didn't just say, oh, I love the world, but for God so loved the world that He gave His yes. only begotten Son. You see, God's love wasn't just a concept that he wants us to just believe arbitrarily. No, no, God's love is something that he took and he gave it a face. Right. And he took his love and he gave it a body. <laughs> and, and, and that love demonstrated to us is that man, Jesus Christ. Right. Who took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yay. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And right here the Bible says, in this 
God is love. That is who he is. That is his character. That is the essence of who God is. But in this was manifested. This is how he showed it to us. His ultimate demonstration, if you will, was when, it was when he sent his only begotten son into the world. Why? That we might live through him. Here in his love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation. And I'm so glad that when I was a five-year-old boy, even before I understood what the word propitiation meant, Amen. Uh, just, just, just a child. Did I realize the love of God? Yes. That God's love was manifested to me through my pastor preaching a message on hell of all things. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I believe in, in hellfire preaching. Sure. I don't believe that's the only thing that we ought to focus on. I don't believe that we ought to be trying to scare people into heaven. But I believe we ought to preach the whole counsel of God. Sure. Amen. He preached a message on hell that day. I remember that fear starting to grip my heart. Because I realized perhaps for the first time that sinners wasn't all those really bad people out there. They were out robbing banks and killing people. No, no, sinners was my five-year-old wicked, deceitful heart. Yeah. That it, it already was struggling against authority. That already wanted its own selfish way. I, I realized I was that sinner that Romans talks about. I realize that sin deserves judgment. Hey. It deserves punishment. It's funny how people can, can, can understand that in a judicial sense, but they think that somehow the judge of all the earth is not going to do right, and he's just going to blink his eyes and say, well, everybody gets in because of my love. He is love, but yeah. he's also holy. That's right. Sure. A holy love. Oh, yes. As a five-year-old boy, I, I, I experienced the love. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone for salvation. And He saved my soul. You see, the love of God, it's not good enough just to know about it. You must appropriate it into your life. Verse number 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Hmm. We'll come back to that idea. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and, in, and His love is perfected in us. Hereby I know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him and he in God. And then we get to verse 16. What a powerful transformational verse that this can be in your life and in mine. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in God, or dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God in him. I see the personification of the love of God, but I also see the persuasion. Yeah. The persuasion of the love of God. As you look at this verse number 16, you see two words used here at the beginning of the verse that are supposed to be our response to God's love. He says, and we have known and believed. And I want to submit to you this morning, you have to have both. True. For God's love to truly transform your life, you have to have both. That first, that word known, isn't just a, a head knowledge, like, oh yeah, I've heard about that. But that actually goes deeper than that. That's an experiential knowledge. Like, I know what I know by experience. I haven't just heard about him. No, no, I've experienced his love. And I believe this word, this, this word in, contained in this word, to know the love of God is to be saved, to have salvation through the love of God. I believe that that can be wrapped up in that word right there. Known, experienced God's love for us. But that's not quite enough to get you through the Christian life. So, whoa, 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 know the love of God's not enough? No, you have to believe it. You have to be absolutely persuaded to have absolute yeah. confidence in God's love to you. That's it. And that is the basis for the Christian life. Right. This is something that I didn't quite put together to my shame here until recently. And I, again, I, don't, I, don't really, I can't really pinpoint it to one particular thing, but I had somehow gotten into my heart and gotten into my mind that God's love for me or his favor to me had something to do with my performance. Sure, brother. I believed Romans 5 and verse 8. Sure. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I, I, I was 100% on board with that verse. 
Oh, he loved me unconditionally. He loved me when I was a sinner. He loved me enough to save him. But somehow, I had gotten convinced that now that I'm saved, that his favor to me, and right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have said his love, per se. I wouldn't have come out and been like, well, I, I sinned, I messed up, so he doesn't love me as much. I wouldn't say that. But somehow that underlying, well, I, I'm not, but what I do has, a, has, a, has an effect on his love or his favor or his, his blessing in my life. And that's just simply not the case. Right. It's simply not the case. In fact, Paul deals with this several times throughout the New Testament, but one of those times is, is in the book of Galatians. He's talking to these Galatian believers, and, and they, they've, they've been saved. They trust that Christ is their Savior, but now they're trying, to, they're trying to take the reins back from the Spirit of God. And he asks them this question in Galatians chapter 3. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ, having been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Mm -hmm. Are ye so foolish? Having then begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Mm -hmm. I think this ties right in there. Well, he saved me. Hallelujah. And now I need to live for him. Mm -hmm. We do need to live for him. True. But that I is the problem. Because <laughs> in my flesh, I don't know about yours, but there dwells no good thing. Amen. In my flesh, I cannot please God. Mm -hmm. In fact, going back to, to chapter 2 and verse 21, Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Right. For if righteousness came by the law, then is Christ dead in vain. But somehow, uh, maybe it's just me. It's not. <laughs> yeah. oh, man, I, I'll let God down. I've heard it preached. Sure. Oh, you, you, when we, when we sin, we let God down. I don't think that's Bible, brother. I, I, don't, I don't know that there's a verse for that. I haven't found one. We've let God down. No, God knows what we're made of. <laughs> right. He remembers our frame. Yeah. He knows that we're dust, and yet he still loves us. Amen. That's it. That's it. And when we get off of this, this confidence and this persuasion that God loves me, all of a sudden things start going haywire in our lives. Once we, can I say it this way? Once we become convinced that the love of God is not enough, then we start looking to other things. Right. That's where idolatry yeah. comes in. Like, wow. Why, is good? Yeah. Well, why do we go after these things? Yeah. Because God's love's not enough. Right. Or we don't believe in his absolute unconditional love towards us. Hmm. We've gotten it twisted in our minds. We think we've got to supplement the love of God. Right. That's true. <laughs> it's not enough. We've we got to add something to yeah. it. We've we, 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 we got to have this little idol over here. We've got to have this little habit over here. We've got to have this little comfort, creature comfort over here. We've got to add to the love of God. But the love of God, it's all that we need. Amen. It's everything. And not only must we know it, not only must we experience it in our lives, but we have to be completely convinced of it. Mm -hmm. And you can't be convinced of the love of God if you're not spending time yeah. right. basking in the presence. There you go. Amen. Of his love. Right. When we, when we, when we allow our sin to, to get us to stand a guilty distance from our Savior, we're, 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 we don't feel the love of God, right? We're not experiencing right. the love of God. We're not persuaded of it because, like, oh, he's mad at me. Maybe, I mean, maybe this came from, from you know, an upbringing where maybe you didn't experience love, unconditional love, and so you've somehow taken those, those traits and you've attached them to the Heavenly Father, but nothing can be further from the truth. Right. We think, man, I've messed up. God's mad at me. I've messed up. I've, I've let God down, and now <laughs> God saw it coming. He's not taken by surprise. But we think, well, what about, what about God's correction? What about his chastening? What about when he has to? What about when he has to deal with us? Can I tell you, he does that in love too. Wow. Listen to Proverbs three: For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. <laughs> we got it all wrong. We got it all wrong. 
We think that, oh man, God's mad at me, and, and oh, I gotta work my way back into His good graces. I gotta work my way back into the ability to have my prayers answered. I gotta, you know, I gotta clean up my life, and I gotta stay good for a certain amount of time before I'll get the smile of God back on my face. Oh, he's smiling as He's whipping you. <laughs> Yeah, come on, as he's chasing you. He's not doing it because he's mad and disappointed and let down. No, he's doing it because he loves you. And he wants right. to draw you to himself. And he delights in you. Amen. I'm telling you, that'll change everything. Yes, sir. Because no, no longer is it, oh, I got to go to church. Right. That's what Christians do. We got to go. Oh, I got to pass out a trap. Got to do it. That's what Christians are supposed to do. Right. Oh, I got to read my Bible. Go ahead. Because that's what Pastor Hender told me I got to do. Um, oh, I have to do this, and I have to do that, and I have to do this. No, 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 no. It becomes I get to. Where are you? There's no longer. I have to do it. Oh, I have to. I have to. I'm beaten down by all this, this burden of living for Jesus, but it's, oh, I have to. And he's so good to me. And he loves me. And oh man, I just I guess I can't wait to get to the word. And oh God, I'm so full of his love. It just it spills out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to let the love of God spill out and hit you there, you know. I, that's what that's what giving the gospel is. That's what it's supposed to be. Not something we gotta manufacture Oh, I just don't have a burden for souls like I should. I just go, oh, well, what's wrong with me? No, but when we fill ourselves up with the love of God, it overflows yeah. and it yeah. hits people as you're walking by. And you, you just can't help but tell. Amen. You can't help but witness. You can't help but serve him. Right. You can't help but love him. Right. That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For too long I lived and I have to. For too long I looked at myself and I said, man, why don't I love God like I'm supposed to? What's wrong with me? Well, why don't I serve God like I'm supposed to? What's wrong with me? When it's not me that's doing it in the first place. Right. It's, it's the life of Christ lived through me. It's the love of God pouring out. Yeah, amen. It changes everything. It changes amen. Everything. When we believe it. Yeah. When we're persuaded of it. Yeah. Uh, don't take my word for it. Let's keep the... Uh, let's, I'm going back to first John. You're probably still there. Let's keep reading. We have known and believed the love of God hath toward us. God is love. And he that dwelt in love dwelt in God and God in him. Verse 17. Herein. Herein what? And the love of God is our love made perfect. Right. You know what that word perfect is? It's a form of that word that Jesus used on the cross. To tell us that it is finished. Oh, yeah. It is perfect. It is complete. We are complete in him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you, when you know, believe, I like to add this one in here too. Revel in, bask in the love of God. Yeah. You don't have to manufacture your love for Him. True. Sure. It comes natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other day we were uh, we were in the nursery in the uh, over at the Grams. And I was watching a couple of my kiddos. The Grams little dog comes in there, pudding or something like that. I don't know. Oh, that was a dog. Bad dog. Dumb dog. Yeah, little dog comes to the nursery. And my son gets to scratching the dog a little bit. And then he goes off and plays. And the dog decided, man, I, I'm, I'm not done. I'm, I, I still got some itches. Yeah. And so in the nursery is this, this mat. And I guess it's kind of rough. All right. I, I, I haven't rolled around on it personally, but I guess, I guess it is. Because the dog goes over this mat and, you know, just starts... <laughs> you know, just, I'm doing what dogs do, you know, wriggling around and, and then like I've never seen this one before. He put his four legs down and like just put his chest and his chin on the mat and then just like used his back legs and just like scooted himself <laughs> forward and just scratched the whole torso area, I guess. And he's just I mean he's reveling and rubbing himself yeah. all up in no his mat. And he's like, oh this is great, oh it's taking care of all these itches and all these needs in my life. And can I tell you? If we'll just get in the love of God like that. I mean, just wrap, hey, hey, hey. wrap ourselves in and read about it and study about yes. it and learn about it and think about it and meditate on it and just get all in there. Yes. I'll start taking care of some of the needs in our hearts and in our lives. Hey, hey, hey. Keep reading. It's getting good. Here in our our love made perfect. You don't have to struggle to love God and love others. Right. Because it's not your love anyway. It's his. Pour it out. Hey, hey. We may have boldness 
in the day of judgment. Yes. I know this is specifically in the, in the context talking about the day of judgment, but can I tell you, the love of God will make you bold in every area of your life. Yeah. Why? Look at this little phrase. Brother Hibner, I'm not sure I have wrapped my head around this phrase completely yet. Damn. But look at this at the end of verse 17. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Just a little phrase. You see, you can, if you're just reading through your Bible study, you know, your Bible reading plan, and have four chapters to get in that day, you can just skip right over that phrase without even giving it a second thought. That's one right. of those phrases, you know? But then you just stop and say, now what? What does that mean? It took me a minute, brother. I'm, 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 what, what does that mean? I don't know if I got it all the way figured out. But because as he, that's Jesus, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is in the presence of the Father, as he is the, you know, the apple of the, of the Father's eye, as he is declared righteous and holy, so are we. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Brother Paul, did you, did, you, did you see that, brother? I mean, it might take you a minute. It took me, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just looking at this one phrase. And I'm, what, did, what does this mean? Oh, I'm telling you, the ramifications are amazing. Yeah. Can I just give you one? When God looks at me, there's the same love in his eyes as when he looks at Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm loved as Jesus is loved. Yes, sir. Because his righteousness is on me. And that's what I mean. He sees Jesus. And you think, you think that he's going to look at Jesus with anything but pure, 100% unconditional love? Absolutely. And as he is, so am I. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> I, 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 again, I don't understand that one completely, but I want, whatever that is, I want. Amen. Amen. Hey. Man. I, 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 might just, I might have to meditate on that one some more because I feel like there's so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, haven't quite, I haven't quite gotten it out yet. It's just bigger, bro. It's just getting bigger. It's getting bigger. bigger. Sweeter and sweeter. Oh, yeah. Mm. Look at verse 18. There is no fear in love. Right. But perfect love, that's his, mm -hmm. casteth out fear. Right. Mm. That word fear is his phobos. <laughs> Phobia. Yeah. Okay, can I tell you? If you struggle with fear, fear of man, Bring snare. fear of the future, right. Fear of whatever, fill in the blank. They're inventing new phobias every year. Amen. If you struggle with fear, fear and God's love cannot coexist. Right. They're like oil and water. <laughs> they, they, they repel, they separate. They, 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 they can't. <laughs> I, I, I like the, uh, like the old, uh, there ain't room in this town for the two of us. Right. And when you get filled up with the love of God, all of a sudden it starts pushing all the fear out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cast it out fear. I mean, throws it out on its hind end. Yeah. Get on out of here. No room for you here. No vacancy. I'm sorry. This, this, this hotel is filled with the love hey. of God. There's no room for fear in here. And it goes, it goes back to that boldness, too. A boldness, that free and fearless confidence. Right. That unreservedness. Okay, not, not arrogance. Right, go ahead. Not arrogance. But that, that, that idea of that little child. I got little children. <laughs> and uh, at this point in their lives, brother, Sister Hibner, they, they, they think I can walk on water. <laughs> they think, man, daddy, daddy's got the muscles. If I have a problem, daddy can solve it. If there's something I can't open, daddy can open it. If there's something I can't figure out, daddy can figure it out. And I haven't told them otherwise yet, Brother Paul. I know they're going to figure it out. I know they're going to figure it out. But I am enjoying it. Amen. The almighty daddy years. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And if they're feeling a little bit afraid, you know where, my little Felicity, you know where she goes? Wraps herself around Amen. this leg right here. Amen. Amen. Peeks out her head. You know? There's something scary over there, but I got my dad right here. Right. I'm holding on to his leg. Right. His legs as big as my whole body. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to be afraid of whatever that is. Uh, 
Right? Look back at verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. You don't got to walk around being afraid of the devil. Right. You don't got to walk around being afraid of the devil. Now we got to have a, you know, a, 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 an understanding. An understanding. That's a good word. We got to fear the Lord. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Perfect love casted out fear. I mean, it's just amazing. It just starts, all these problems that we have, they start, they start, they start getting taken care of. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Oh, then my third point was the power, the power of the love of God. I didn't give you that one, but we've been talking about it. That's all right. Personification, Jesus Christ himself, the persuasion. I've got to be convinced of it. Yeah. I've got to make up my mind to stop believing the lies of the devil. Stop believing the lies that say that God's love has something to do with who I am and what I've done. <laughs> say, I'm I'm loved. Right. In a perfect love. And you watch the power of God's love go through you and work through you and in you and in you. Why do, we, why do we struggle with these petty things? Because we don't believe God loves us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not, we're not persuaded in the power. We're on the power. God will not let anything happen that is not in the best interest of the one he loves. I believe that with all my heart. Right. Now, it might not be the most comfortable thing. It might not be the thing that we would choose. But anything and everything that God will allow in our lives is for our good. Yes. And for his glory. Yes. And you can trust that. You can take that to the bank every single time. And I love this. I wrote this down. <laughs> God doesn't love the best version of me. He loves me. Amen. Amen. He didn't know the dream has got everything all put together and tied a nice knot in a bow. And, you know, kids acting perfect. Relationship with the wife is just, oh man, still on the honeymoon, you know. Or just, just, just walking with God and slaying giants. That's not, that's, he loves me. Amen. And all that stuff will come. Amen. As I know and believe and revel. I like that word. Revel. Yeah, revel. Yeah, the love. Oh, yeah, roll around him. Yeah. <laughs> like, get some on you. Yeah. Come on, get some on you. Like a hog in mud. I'm telling you. We, we, get so, we get so dignified with the love of God, brother. Right? Oh, yeah. Come on. You know, we're too dignified for our own good. We'll, you know, have a little bit. Yeah. You know, right? Just forget okay. all that and dive in there, bro. Yeah. yeah. Dive in there. <laughs> like a little kid with a chocolate fondue fountain. He's not getting the little forks and, you know, dipping the marshmallow and just putting it in halfway and twisting it, you know, and making sure the chocolate hardens so he doesn't drip it all over the countertop and putting it in his mouth. No, no, he's picking that thing up with his right. fist. Right. Putting it in there, man, getting it all up his arm and dripping it all oh, yeah. over the Oh, yeah. Get some. Yes, Get sir. some. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Hey. That's good, bro. I'm telling you. Yes, it's amazing through, through this passage as well. I'll just hit this before we go. That, uh, over and over it says, that, verse 20, If a man say, I love God and hate this brother, he's a liar. Right. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Right. Can I say, the love of God will fix our interpersonal issues. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. As much as we need to be peaceful. Well, how, how do we... Only through pride come with contention. Our issues come when we're not filled with the love of God and disseminating the love of God. Our issues come when we're filled with ourselves and we feel like I've been offended and I've been hurt and they've done this to me and this and that and the other thing. And I can't believe that I, 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 I. Right. Man, I'm not preaching on forgiveness this morning, but would you remember what you did to Jesus? Yeah. All of a sudden, all them brother problems didn't seem like a big <laughs> hey, Amen. Hey, man, preach on that person. And the only way, are you listening? The only way that we can be right with others, the only way that we can love our brother is through Christ. Hey, Amen. We can't do it. It's not natural. People are annoying. People Good get on your nerves. People do dumb good. things. And I'm a people. Amen. Hey, man. You hang around me long enough, I'm annoying. Amen. Let me get in your nerves. 
Don't even that too hard with a hinder now. <laughs> you were right. But it's Jesus. This is supernatural. Okay, this 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 chapter, all these things, they, they are not products of our flesh. They are not something right. we can work up. They are not something we can manufacture through our best efforts. Only God's love can do that. Right. And so I ask you this morning. Have you known? And do you believe the love of God? And, can I just... Uh, oh, yeah. scripture. Are you reveling in this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to change water in it. Yeah. Lord, we love you this morning because you first loved us. Oh, God. Help us. Father, I'm so thankful. If your love was based on anything about me, I'd be, I, I would be in serious trouble. But your love is unconditional. And it's freely offered. Would you help us to identify those areas in our lives perhaps we believe the lie of the devil, we believe that somehow we have something to do with our sanctification, or somehow, Lord, because of our actions, that that we have to work our way back into your good graces, Lord, I pray you help us to believe your love and to hold it up. And to spend time with the one who loves us. Again, that's not hard to do, Lord, when we believe you love us. <laughs> we want to spend time with you. Would you help us do that? Fill us with your love. May that love spill out, spill over, and affect every area of our lives, every person in which we come in contact. Thank you for Jesus. Mm. My, my, my. What are you going to do with that? My, my, my. I've said it often. You think about this. Every year, I start probably right after I thank God for grace meeting in November, somewhere right after that, somewhere early December, and I read. Start reading my Bible and read my Bible through just like a book. That way, I can tell the Independent Baptist brethren, <laughs> I read my Bible through this year. <laughs> and so I can say, I can enjoy it the rest of it. Yes, that's good. Bro. So I start that's out good. sometime in December into January and I read my Bible through and I say, now I've got it taken care of. I've got myself out of bondage. Good. Now I can enjoy my Bible. Good, brother. Now let me just ask you this. I want to show you how much this messes you up. This mentality of Romanism in your Romanist Baptist churches. Come on. Which is better? Being a missionary or being a mechanic? Being a missionary. <laughs> Whoa! Yep, yep. Who told you that? Yes, sir. Which is better? Going soul winning or sitting in your house and doing what? Sewing. Soul winning or sewing? Soul winning. Who told you that? Why do you become a church secretary? Why do you clean the church? Why do you preach? Why do we make so much on a call to preach instead of on surrender, submitting ourselves unto God as those that are alive and dead and are members of this of righteousness unto God? Sir. Who told you to surrender to missions? <clears throat> Did you find that in the King James Bible? No! You found that in your independent Baptist churches. And I feel one. I will never be a Romanist. It's wicked. But it's exactly what we've learned. You do your baddie, go out and memorize more scriptures. They say go to confession and say your Hail Mary to our fathers and glory be. And, and the... What's the difference? Independent. 
Independent Baptist fundamentalist? Nope. Bible college? No. <laughs> Who establishes your goings? Your own self and your own saying, I'm going to do this for God? No. You can ask anybody, and I've got you in here. How many times have I said, quit doing stuff for God, let God do in you? Yes. All the time. And through you. He worketh in you both the will and do of His good pleasure. Right. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. It's Him. Does that mean you don't work out? What's in you? No, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because of the fact that we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I'm not trying to throw one thing away to give you the other thing. But why do we do this? The same chapter that says that we, uh, the terror of the Lord is the same chapter that teaches us that the love of Christ constraineth man. Because we thus judge that one died for all, the were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but not for, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Unto. Yep. I've got my eyes woo, 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 looking unto Jesus. Knowing that I give unto them, that's Jesus, God. Eternal life and they shall never perish. Knowing that he, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I love you. The author and the finisher. Yeah. Now let me take this to earthly relationships. A man marries a wife. And she feels like I have to, and he feels like they have to give due benevolence. You don't understand that? It's be for Bible. Because to make sure that that person keeps loving you. Mm. I've got to cook and clean. I've got to go to work to make sure that person keeps loving me. And how many of us make our love conditional toward others? Oh, it's the whole world relationship is like a job. Mm. It ought not so to be. Yes. I get a paycheck because I perform a job. Let me say, I preach because I love to preach. And I love the Lord. And I can't help it. Y'all might not believe this, but Brother Drew Hay was supposed to preach that. And here I am up here doing it. I can't help it, Brother Paul. I can't help it. It's in me. God put something in me that says, good preaching makes you want to preach. Bad preaching makes you want to preach. <laughs> no preaching makes you want to preach. All preaching makes you want to preach. Can't get away from me. Because there's so much more, and especially get on one of my favorite subjects. Brother Drew, you get my, uh, when I pray for you every day, I think you get my my little, uh, do you get my thing? It's a little text. I do when I pray for you, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the morning, because I don't get time to pray for you all, all the time. I don't get four hours in the morning to just have prayer time. But if you notice, I'm trying to get your eyes on the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we see him with whom we have to do. The more you know him, the more I come to know him, Brother Drew, I've been where you were. He's been where you were. She's been where you were. They've been where you were. We've all been there at some time or another. And it started out. When we first got saved, yeah, I don't know about y'all that got saved in real young days, but for me, when I first got saved, it was just Jesus was everything. I didn't care about nothing. Yep. Didn't care about what the brethren thought. 
And I did not know that Christian rock was a bad thing. And Christian contemporary music was a bad thing. All I knew was that what I was listening to was bad. And guess what? I started listening to some things I shouldn't, that I would not recommend to anybody now. But it was a whole lot better than what I had. But God started showing me. You don't need to listen to that. The more I got to know God, the more I'm like, I don't even want to listen to that. That stuff's so shallow. That stuff's so shallow. So he says, well, why do you dress the way you dress? And I say, want to? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I, I, well, I'll tell you this. I, 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 people ask you, why, ask me, why did you leave the Rock of Ages prison ministry? I loved it. You can ask my wife, I was enjoying it. I loved the reputation. I mean, because after 12 years of it, you're always able to do it. You're not, you've got support enough, but you're always able to go back to church. You're always able to raise money for uh, Bibles and stuff. You're always, and you know, it's a fun thing. I enjoy it because I like people. But they asked me why. I said, why, why'd you leave that? Why'd you leave Indiana? And I'm like, this God wanted me to. They said, well, is it, did, you, did you like Texas more than you like Indiana? And I'm like, they're places. They're just places. Now, do I think Indiana's pretty? I like, but I don't even eat corn. I don't want it in my, I don't use corn syrup, don't eat corn, I don't eat corn. I, I like cornbread, but I don't eat cornbread. I don't eat corn. I don't like it in my gasoline. And all I see around is corn. But you know what I like about it? Hey, these people are getting their paycheck. And they're enjoying, they're getting something from it. I like them liking corn. <clears throat> I like them that like corn. Why? Because it helps our economy in the in shall we good in the end. Now I'm not I'm, I'm trying to get you to go, I'm going somewhere, okay? I didn't move here because I like corn. I didn't move here because I didn't we didn't start this church because we wanted to start a church. I didn't know what to do. Life had fallen apart on me. I'm talking to Brother Nichols, and I'm like, somebody's got to reach out with me. I wasn't happy with the, 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 the churches here in Shelbyville because there weren't King David Bible churches that were not, they had no standards and that didn't be any sort. And I'm like, man, something's wrong here. Why is nobody trying to do this? Nobody was out witnessing. No Baptists were out witnessing. Somebody's got to. I live here and there's no church here that I could go to. One of my good friends pastored one of them. And he knew I wouldn't do in his church. And I said, Dear God, what do I do? I was candidating for churches. And God said, Start one. I said, Okie dokie. I will. And I did. It's not much. But it's God. And he's done a work here. And everybody in Shelbyville has gotten literature at some point. <laughs> and they're going to get some more, Brother Paul. We're going to reach this town with the gospel. And unless the rapture happens in the next few months, we're going to have everybody in Shelbyville is going to have gospel literature on the program. Which is going to grow. Oh, everybody in Shelby is going to have gospel literature on the doorstep if we, if, unless God makes it the way we can. We're going to do our part. Brother Jerry is in the hospital because he's not passing out gospel literature. Bless his heart. Oh, I love him. He's out giving out tracks. Bell back. But he didn't do it because he has to give out tracks. He did it because God 
made upon his heart. He loves the Lord. He loves his church because he loves the Lord. He loves his pastor. He loves the people of God. He loves souls. Not because these things are anything. It's Christ who's everything. Yes. I've ran long enough. I'm just trying to help you take this and put what Brother Drew just preached to put it into reality. You don't have to do anything for God. Their feet did not swell. He fed them in the wilderness and all they did was try to provoke him. In the provocation, that's what it says. Yes, sir. Yeah. They kept provoking him and he said, I'm killing you plenty. Matter of fact, I'll give you more than enough. I'll give you quail if you want. Oh It'll be coming out your nose if you want so wow. I'm going to keep on giving you. You're going to have water. You're going to complain because it's bitter water. But guess what? I'll show you a total of a, a, a tree in the middle of it. Throw a cross right in the middle yeah. of it. It'll be sweet water. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it won't be in Texas. But sweet water is in Texas. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to tell you. He said, "Just I'm going to keep on. I'm not going to quit loving you. Because I've loved you with an everlasting love. Oh, and then we wonder. Then we wonder why we don't love him. Because he loved us. Lord, I pray, God. Oh, God. Help us. Yes. Song. But I want you to know that we love him because he first loved us. My Jesus, I love you. I love you.
Yes. No other reason. Yep, that's it. No other reason. 